And um, sometime in the month of January, we will begin the book of 1 Corinthians on Wednesday nights, and we'll probably be there. Uh, I mean, I'd be shocked if the Lord doesn't come back before we finish 1 Corinthians, 13 chapters and chock full of stuff. And uh, some nights we'll have to bring our boxing gloves because you'll probably disagree with me on some stuff in 1 Corinthians, but we'll get through it. By the way, I had a, did I tell this in church? I don't remember, but I've told it several times one-on-one, -on -one, and I may have told it in church. So if you, if I already told it, laugh at it anyway, okay? Um, now I'm thinking that I did. Anyway, uh, so this pastor in Pennsylvania asked me uh, about a month ago, he said, uh, he said, I'm looking at my 2024 calendar I'm like man I don't even have a 2024 calendar he said uh, we have a week-long revival meeting in the spring he said uh, would you be willing to come and preach uh, the week-long revival for us in 2024 I said uh, man I'm pretty sure the Lord's going to come back before 2024 and he got he didn't even didn't even miss a beat he goes well we'd rather have the Lord <laughs> but he said if he doesn't come, would you come? And I said, sure, I will. So anyway, you, you laugh like you hadn't heard it. So maybe I hadn't told that before. All right, so here we go on creation here. And um, I'm not going to belabor this tonight. We've got about 15 minutes till 830. And uh, it, since many of you will be here again tomorrow morning, uh, I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna, uh, push the limits tonight. So we will probably just look at pages two and three, who created everything and what happened at creation. I want to ask you to hear this through the ears of a new believer. And, and turn to Genesis chapter one. That's the only place we'll have to turn tonight is Genesis one and two. Everything else is in the booklet. But um, hear this through the ears of a, of a new believer. Somebody who's just gotten saved and all their life, they have been hearing billions and billions of years ago, and they've been hearing about the Big Bang, and uh, they think of Charles Darwin as a hero, you know, and, and all of a sudden, they weren't thinking about creation versus evolution when they heard the gospel and put their faith in Jesus Christ. And true, it is true that when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, that he changes your perspective. So the spirit of God will change. He will soften up their position on these other things. But understand you're talking to them about something. In, if you get to this level here. And by the way, if you're discipling somebody and they have hung on until this one, they're in. You know what I mean? How many, how many booklets? This is like what, booklet 22 or 23 or something. Uh, they're in but at this point. Uh, as far as their faith goes. But it still might be a little tough for them to swallow. There's, there's always those things. I, I'll never forget having a, a, uh, a man uh, in my office. Oh, man, this has to be 12, 13 years ago, maybe more. And uh, he was an adult man. He had gotten saved. And he sat in my office and he said, Pastor, um, I've been saved. I trust Jesus. I've given my life to him. But he said, I believe with all of my heart that this thing that the Bible says is wrong is right. And it was a major, major lifestyle thing. He said, I'm sorry, I will never change my life, uh, my mind about that. I will never change my mind about that. And I said, that's okay. He said, really, it's okay? I said, yeah, because I'm not in the mind-changing business. I said, I'm just going to tell you to do what I, what I encourage every other new believer to do. Just get in the book, walk with God in prayer, and he'll do what he's going to do. And it wasn't a month later. He was right back in my office, right back in the same chair, and he was crying this time. He said, I can't believe it. He said, it's like God turned on a light for me. And he said, this thing, it's been an idol my whole life. And the Lord showed me without a doubt in my heart that I was wrong and he was right. And I'll be honest, when he sat there the first time, I didn't think he'd ever change his mind. But God changed it for him. And so don't get intimidated by this. You go, oh, 
You know, I've been, I've been discipling this person for six months, and this is where I'm going to lose him. Not if the Spirit of God is living inside of them. I'm not saying it may not, it may not be difficult for them, but God changes hearts. And so, uh, but just, just take that into account when you're talking to somebody about creation who is newly saved, and all their life they've believed in a God named Darwin, and now you're showing them that the Bible says something completely different. So let's jump into this, and I scanned this, but I didn't read the first paragraph, so with my luck, that's what the first paragraph says. I don't know. Creation is God's act of bringing the universe into existence. It is important to understand and believe that uh, what took place in the Genesis account of creation. If a person believes the events of creation by faith, there is nothing in God's word that would not be accepted by faith. The wonder, that's a great statement, the wonder and magnificence of creation help us to believe in God and his word. Man, this is where we just were on uh, uh, Sunday, wasn't it? When I can, Psalm 8, 3, and 4, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? All right, let me throw this commercial in here and I'm watching the clock, but um, stay in touch with creation. Staying in touch. Creation is not your only connection to God, but I think it's an indispensable connection to God. I don't think we realize how much the sun preaches to us. I was just reading a story. Oh, uh, I was reading about a let you look up. You want to you want a uh, interesting search on the Internet, especially your ladies. Look up Lilius Trotter. Lilius Trotter. Lilius Trotter is the one who uh, wrote the. The, she was a missionary to Algeria, lived in the 1800s and into the 1900s. But she was the one that wrote the devotional that that lady had read to her that I told you about a few weeks ago, who read, heard the one line from that devotional, and she wound up writing the, the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Lilius Trotter. It's a very interesting study. Um, if you search her name, uh, and you'll need to read, I think she's got a Wikipedia page that somebody wrote, but then you'll see three or four or five other places, just amazing life. But in this devotional that she wrote called Focused, and I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but the title is misspelled. It's spelled with two S's. So every time I typed it into my little script, uh, it was correcting me, but it's, it's, it's a title, so I had to go with the wrong, wrong spelling, the wrong misspelling. There you go. And so anyway, but in that thing called focused, it's the entire point of the devotional is on a single dandelion and how that single dandelion preached a message that of, of as long as you face the sun, God can use you. So that, that's, a, that's a different story. Anyway, uh, stay in touch with creation and con creation will keep you connected to the Lord. So number one. Who created everything? Now, I know, man, if you grew up in church, if you've, if you've been saved a long time, this is so basic. But hear it, see it through the eyes of a new believer. Who created everything? Number one, God created everything. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created everything. Number two, he spoke everything into existence out of nothing. God is the only one, the only being ever whose words have creative power. Nobody else can talk and bring something into existence. Only God, only God's word has the power to create. By the way, his word still has the power to create. I don't mean that you're going to go around with your Bible and read Bible verses and, you know, trees appear out of nothing. I don't mean that. In this dispensation, the purpose of God's word is to create new life. Jesus said, as we read a minute ago, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. How do we get that abundant life? Through the word. 
God's word has the power to create victory, peace, joy, love in your life. God created everything and he spoke everything into existence out of nothing. Everything, including the farthest reaching galaxies, was made from nothing into something by the voice of God. Do you know how big the Bible says the universe is? It's as the span of God's right hand. I had my left hand up there. It says the span of God's right hand. Well, how big is God? Science estimates, and this is the last time I heard this stat was about 20 years ago, so they, their estimation may be bigger by now. But science estimates that the universe is 12 billion light years from one end to the other. Do you know what a light year is? A light year is how far you could travel in a year if you were traveling at the speed of light. Speed of light, I believe, is 186,000 miles an hour. Does that sound right? A second. Thank you. I was off by a measure of 60. 186,000 miles per second. How far could you travel in one year at 186,000 miles a second? That's a light year. And scientists 20 years ago estimated that the universe was 12 billion light years from one end to the other. And all that information comes from my, my uh, space expert, John Jenkins. But anyway, uh, that's who I first heard those stats from. But hey, I, and I, hear, I hear a skeptic asking a question. Wait a minute. If you don't trust scientists on the age of the earth, how do you trust them on their estimation of the size of the heavens? That's a good question. The answer is because with the size of the universe, you, you actually have something to look at, something to observe. That's what science is, observing. So I trust their estimate on what they're observing a whole lot more than I do something that they didn't see. There was only one observer at creation, and he wrote a book, and we don't believe him. So anyway, massive. And the Bible says that the universe is as the span of God's right hand. 12 billion light years from here to here. How awesome is God? Anyway, he spoke everything into, uh, into existence out of nothing. Everything, including the farthest reaching galaxies, was made from nothing into something by the voice of God. Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Psalm 33, 6 and 9, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. God created everything. What happened at creation? All right. First of all, God created everything in six days. And we've been through this a zillion times, so we won't read the, the scriptures, but you know that this is what the Bible says. Day one, he created light and darkness. Day two, he, he uh, created the firmament. That's the, the sky, the heavens. Day three, he created the dry land and plants. Day four, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Uh, last night was a beautifully clear night. Uh, tonight, I haven't been outside since the sun went down, so I don't know. But if, if it's clear again, just look up into the sky. And uh, look, I, you know what I love to see that's so cool is, is uh, planets. You say, how do you know you're looking at a planet? You Google it. That's how you know. Um, there's, you can even get an app where you take a picture of the sky, and it'll identify, the, the, this, identify what you're looking at. But um, uh, literally, if you see a, a star that is so big, that you go, eh, it looks a little bigger than a star. And you, if you've never done this before, you just Google, um, what, what's, what's, what planet can I see tonight from Danbury, Connecticut, or something like that, and it'll tell you. Anyway, God created everything in six days, and uh, I, oh, I did sun, moon, and stars. Day five, he created the fish and the birds, and then on day six, he created the animals and Adam and Eve. Look at Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. 
Everything God created was complete and it was good. And then look at this, number two, God then rested on day seven. Look at chapter two and verse two. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Uh, You know, you'll get a lot of people, and there are a lot of theories that have developed over the years that became popular back when, I'm talking about late 1800s, early 1900s, when people, even Christians, were jumping ship onto Darwin's theories. There was a a lot of people who were trying to reconcile the Bible and what they called science, and that's where they came up with a lot of harebrained theories. And so be careful of that. And I would urge you, uh, I would urge you to listen to Ken Ham and the Answers in Genesis podcast, one minute a day, Monday through Friday. And uh, he is a, a strong believer in six literal days, seven literal days, God rested on the seventh day. And uh, I, I put a lot of stock because he's not just a preacher, he is a scientist and he knows his stuff and he will say stuff that'll blow your mind. Uh, at, uh, wow, I, I've never heard anything like that before. Um, but uh, he will help you stay grounded in a scriptural explanation of creation. Number three, It's interesting to note that in the first three days, God created three distinct places or environments, and then he filled them in the same order on the last three days. That's quite an observation there. He created three different environments, and then he filled them in days four, five, and six. Fantastic. We'll end there tonight, and we'll pick up there next Wednesday night, which is the last day of November.